Go Thanks. for it. Um, morning, everyone. I'm Joy Hobbs, and Don Charles and I are going to be talking about recent activity and feature plans for the Diatom constituent databases. Um, I had the opportunity to get involved with Neotoma about four or five years ago, uh, but the vast majority of the holdings in these Diatom databases represent the massive effort that Don has spearheaded. Um, I'm really grateful that he's given me up the opportunity to tag on to what he's built here. So I'm going to start by mentioning that the last few years have seen two new constituent databases focused on diatoms. Um, I've been leading the database from the St. Croix Research Station, and the South American Tropical Diatom Database has been led by Xavier Benito. Uh, we've also developed collaborative relationships with several other outside groups. From the St. Croix Research Station perspective, a good deal of our work during this grant cycle has focused on work with the National Parks Park Service in the Great Lakes region of the United States. Uh, our colleagues at NPS have been really excited and supportive of our use of Neotoma as a place to both archive our diatom records and make them more broadly available. And Don also has a working relationship with the Northeast Diatom Sediment Collaborative. And this group has contributed data sets, uh, but even more importantly, Neotoma has been um, a, a great source of data for their work. Um, and as Jack was mentioning, Don and I have co-organized several workshops over the past three years. We started with Don leading a data steward training for myself and several others from the St. Croix Research Station in January of 2021. And this was originally planned to be an in-person workshop, but for obvious reasons um, was virtual. Uh, however, this provided us with, with a really good model for being able to hold some of these trainings virtually, especially when it comes to, to teaching Tilia. And so then to get the word out to the broader community, we've held two pre-conference workshops, one at the Joint Aquatic Sciences meeting in Michigan in May of 2022, and then at the IAL IPA meeting in Bariloche, Argentina in November of 2022. And these workshops were kind of a mix of in-person and virtual. As Jack mentioned, we do have any materials we've developed available for others if they're helpful. Um, the goals of our workshops were to introduce people to Neotoma, gather some data sets when we could, introduce just the very basics of Tilia, um, and then have Simon and Socorro come in and demo the R package. Uh, during the past few years, Don has hosted three co-op students at Drexel University. These students work full-time in the summer and they're being paid off the NSF grant. They've been really instrumental with things like um, our resources, uploads, and gathering data. Um, I'll mention that Savannah Mitchum is the current co-op student who just started working with Don and she's joining our meeting this week. Um, we've also created some R vignettes for diatoms. Two of Don's co-op students um, were really helpful in working with Simon and Socorro to get those going. And the goal is to make them publi a publicly accessible part of the Neotoma 2 R package. Um, Simon, I'll have you just kind of go yep. forward to that next one. Thanks. Um, so just to move on to a summary of our data holdings, you can see our total data volume at the top, over 4,000 data sets at over 3,700 sites. Um, 14,000 taxa names. I'm not entirely sure if those are all unique names, but I think we have at least six to 7,000 unique taxa in the database. And, and these holdings um, represent the three constituent databases that you see listed here. Um, just over the last year, we've added 1,000 data sets to over 900 new sites. Um, and the map here shows say that our holdings are strong in the US and Canada, but we are starting to branch out, um, especially into South America. Um, and again, Xavier Benito has been spearheading a lot of that work. Um, I thought what was kind of cool is our most recently added site is Lake Annie in Florida of the United States. And I think that's great because that data came to us from Evelyn Geyser, a diatom colleague who we connected with at one of our Neotoma workshops at the Joint Aquatic Sciences meeting in May. Um, and now I'm going to turn it over to Don for the rest of the presentation. 
Okay, thank you, Troy. Can everybody hear me okay? Yep. Yep, okay. So <clears throat> what's coming next? Uh, most of our emphasis is going to be on adding more diatom data sets. And these are going to be to all three of the major active uh, diatom databases. So Joy will be adding more data <clears throat> from the Great Lakes area and uh, working with the National Park Service. And Xavier Benito will be adding to the South American database. He's been doing a lot of work on the taxonomy, trying to get the, all the taxonomy in shape. And when he's done with that, then he'll actually start loading a lot of the sample data. And then I will be working with Savannah Mitchum, a co-op student this summer, uh, focusing on adding as many new data sets as we can. Um, and one of the things we might do differently, or we focus a little bit more differently, is to prioritize data sets with the idea in mind of starting to do some sample, example sample analysis to showcase a little bit better how Neotoma data can be used. And because one of the things that we've done in the past is just really wanting to try and get as much data in the database as possible. Uh, because unless there's a certain mineral amount, there's not too much you can do with it other than storing the data. So uh, the idea is to have some examples of how Neotoma data can be used with the idea that that will help promote more use by scientists and more contributions to the data set. Okay, another uh, topic, uh, one of the problems, one of the issues of using a lot of data that's come from different sources is dealing with the taxonomic inconsistencies. So there are various ways of working on those. We've discussed them. We haven't really done too much with them yet, but we're gonna be doing some ex experimentation with uh, ways of doing that. I think because diatom taxonomy data is so complex and cha has changed so much over time that we'll probably be doing that mostly outside of the Neotoma database, although we're interested in ways in which that could be incorporated in the Neotoma database. Uh, we'll continue with steward training, but probably mostly on a one-on-one -on -one or small group basis. In general, the workshops for just diatom analysis, uh, diatom uh, stewards uh, isn't quite so cost-effective, although maybe we could be doing some of the diatom workshop work with as part of other larger workshops. As Joy mentioned, we were working with these two outside groups, National Park Service and this group of biologists in the Northeast United States that are trying to develop better ways to manage lakes uh, and are very interested in diatoms. So we've uh, basically provided data to them. And this map on the right shows a lot of the calibration sites, surface sample diatom sites. Uh, we've provided data. And then because this is EPA funded and they want to be doing more uh, diatom work, um, we've been uh, arguing and uh, that, that a lot of the data should be put in the atom. It would be a good place to put it. Uh, we want to continue to assist with the development of the R resources, working with Simon and Socorro. Uh, we will not focus on that so much this year as we, as we had with Eric and Jaron in the last year. But we're certainly going to be using R. And, and help can help provide some ideas. Okay, needs and wants. Since we do mostly data entry, we spend a lot of time with Tilia. And uh, one of the issues is that th there's more frequently than we would like some problems or things just take a long time to deal with or figure out. So we fully support efforts uh, and, and Brian's work and Simon's work to uh, streamline the process uh, and to focus on the tele and, and whatever data entry process is, is going to be done. Um, a couple of things just mentioned we uh, miss and like the Google Maps feature. Uh, maybe have some more uh, bottom sample, uh, streamline that a little bit too. And then, and then this idea of making sure that 
in the future, there's dedicated support for Telia. Uh, we know that Simon um, helps us uh, quite a bit and that maybe that he th it might be better used for his time to be doing some other things. But um, we would like some more tools for the stewards to help uh, manage in the database. Um, as Simon will talk about tomorrow, there's a lot of uh, taxonomic inconsistencies and errors and so forth in the Atoma, and making it easier for the stewards to deal with that would be a good thing. Uh, working with aggregate data sets, which we find are very important, would be uh, good. Um, also, in the in the future, because we're and this is looking forward to the proposal, uh, we think it would be good to consider. Uh, some funding for a postdoc or higher level researcher, as opposed to having uh, co-op students uh, year by year. Um, it'd be because we're, we've now got enough data in the Atoma that we really need to be doing more addressing questions and probably are at a point where it would be easier to get outside funding, separate funding for projects. But I, I think we're going to need somebody else to help with that. Um, we would also like uh, Simon and Sakaro have been uh, finalizing the Diatom R vignette and like that to be uh, finished and available. Oh, time to stop. And available to the uh, as part of the Neotoma 2R package. Um, and then and then we're also looking forward to our discussions on how to better harmonize and deal with taxonomic issues. Thank you.